Ever wondered why understanding the Code of Civil Procedure, specifically Order 8, is so important? Immerse yourself in the fascinating realm of legal jargon where every word and phrase holds significant weight. Today we're exploring the Code of Civil Procedure, 1908, or as it's more commonly known, the CPC. This is the procedural law related to the administration of civil proceedings in India. One of the monumental sections of this code is Order 8. This order is all about the written statement, set-off and counterclaim. It lays down the rules and guidelines for presenting a defence in a civil suit. From prescribing the timeline for filing a written statement to dictating the duty of the defendant to produce documents, Order 8 is a comprehensive guide to the defendant's responsibilities. Understanding this order is crucial for any budding lawyer or legal enthusiast. It's the backbone of civil proceedings and a pivotal part of the Indian legal system. Let's delve deeper into the rules under Order 8 to understand its nuances. Rule 1 of Order 8 focuses on the written statement. This rule imposes a duty on the defendant to present a written statement of his defence within a 30-day period from the date of service of summons. Now, what happens if the defendant fails to adhere to this time frame? The court, in its discretion, may permit the defendant to file the written statement on another day, but not later than 90 days from the date of service of summons. This rule underlines the importance of timely response in a civil suit. A delay in presenting the written statement could result in disciplinary actions and may even compromise the defence. It's crucial to remember that the days are counted from the date of service of summons and not from the date of receipt of the summons. So always keep an eye on the calendar and adhere to the stipulated timeline. Remember, timing is crucial when presenting your written statement. Next up is Rule 1A, which deals with the defendant's duty to produce documents. Now let's delve into what this means. If a defendant is basing their defense upon a document or if they're relying on any document within their possession or power, they are required to do a couple of things. Firstly, they must enter such document in a list. This list serves as a record of all pertinent documents that the defense will reference or rely on throughout the case. Secondly, they must produce it in court when the written statement is presented. This presentation provides a tangible basis for the defense's claims. Lastly, they must deliver the document, along with a copy thereof, to be filed with the written statement. This ensures that both the court and the opposing side have access to the same information. Providing all relevant documents is a key part of building a solid defence. Now, let's turn our attention to Rules 2 and 3. When it comes to the Code of Civil Procedure, understanding the nuances of your defence is paramount. Rule 2 of Order 8 underscores this point. As a defendant, you're required to raise every matter in your pleading that could potentially render the plaintiff's suit non-maintainable. It's not just about stating your case, it's about examining the plaintiff's claim from every possible angle. If there's a legal reason why the suit may be void or voidable, it's your duty to bring this to light. Remember, your defense is not simply a response to the plaintiff's allegations, it's a holistic examination of the case at hand. So don't shy away from challenging the maintainability of the suit. If you can find a legal reason to dismiss it, make your case. But as you navigate Rule 2, don't forget the importance of Rule 3. The Code of Civil Procedure doesn't merely require you to deny the plaintiff's allegations, it asks you to deny them specifically. A general denial won't cut it. You need to tackle each and every allegation of fact, dealing specifically with those you don't admit to being true. This isn't about being argumentative or combative. Rather, it's about clarity and precision. By addressing each allegation individually, you're not only strengthening your defence, but also aiding the court in understanding your perspective. It's a meticulous process, but it's a necessary one. Imagine a game of chess. You wouldn't simply move your pieces around aimlessly, would you? Each move is calculated, each response is specific to the opponent's last move. That's how you should approach your written statement. Each denial, each assertion is a calculated move in your defence strategy. So as you craft your written statement, remember the importance of Rules 2 and 3. 
raise every matter that could render the suit non-maintainable, deny each allegation with specificity. Your defense isn't just about what you say, it's about how you say it. Being thorough and specific in your pleading and denials is crucial for a strong defense. Finally, let's discuss Rule 4, which deals with evasive denial. This rule holds crucial significance in the defendant's written statement. It requires that when a defendant denies an allegation of fact, he must not do so evasively. Rather, he should directly answer the point of substance. Now, what exactly does this mean? Well, in simple terms, it means that the defendant should not beat around the bush. If there's an allegation, he needs to confront it head on, not avoid it or respond in a vague, unclear manner. It's about being forthright and unambiguous in your denial. Remember, an evasive denial can weaken your defense and might even lead the court to draw an adverse inference. So, it's not just about denying the allegations, it's about how effectively and clearly you deny them. Avoiding evasiveness and addressing allegations directly is a must for a successful defense. Now that we've covered all the rules under Order 8, let's summarize the key points. Firstly, the defendant is required to present a written statement of defense within 30 days from the date of service of summons. If they fail to do so, they may be allowed to file it on another day specified by the court, but not later than 90 days from the date of service of summons. Secondly, if the defendant bases his defense on a document or relies on any document in his possession, they must produce it in court when the written statement is presented. Thirdly, the defendant must raise all matters which show the suit not to be maintainable or that the transaction is either void or voidable in point of law. Fourthly, the defendant must deal specifically with each allegation of fact of which he does not admit the truth. Lastly, any denial of an allegation of fact by the defendant must answer the point of substance. Remember, understanding and adhering to these rules is crucial in the realm of civil law.